Hey, water is life. You know this, right? Like, you can't go too long without having water. You got to have it. Even when the children of Israel were wandering through the wilderness, no water. God brought water out of a rock. He had to have it. He had to have it to live. When Jesus was going through Samaria and he stopped at a well and he let the boys go on in to town to get him some food and a woman came, a Samaritan woman, two strikes against her. She's a woman. Men aren't supposed to talk to women in that culture. And also she was a Samaritan. They considered him a half-breed. She came to draw her water. Jesus says, how about give me some of that? And ultimately, he tells her, if you knew the kind of water that I could give you, you'd never thirst again because it's living water. Fast forward all the way to Revelation and to the, to the end of time when God establishes his holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down, the new heavens and the new earth. And the Bible says in Revelation 7, 17, that there will be living water, a river of living water that will never cease. Your bodies, our bodies are made up of approximately 60% water, give or take, any day based upon the year. We are made of water. Water is life. Water is death. It's also death. Too much too fast, and rather than give life, it'll take life. The Egyptians were chasing the Israelites. God parted the Red Sea. A million Israelites walked across on dry land, and the Egyptians came through, and he brought the water back in, drowned them all. Water is death too much, too quickly. God destroyed humanity all except for eight people. He instructed Noah to build an ark as he brought rain for the first time in all of creation. And the whole earth flooded and all of humanity died in the flood. Water is death. Water is life. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 10, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we've been united with him in a death like this, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, death, in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin, for one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. And death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Baptism. Baptism is an identification with Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins and rose up from the grave. Who died and lived. And we die to an old life, and we are raised to a new life in Christ. You each, I could go to you today and say, show me your identification. We just got our North Carolina driver's license. Mine looks like a horrible mugshot. But anyway, 
Somebody asks for my ID. I show them my picture ID. This is who I am. This is my name, my address. I'm an organ donor, you know. This pool right here becomes a symbol of our identification. Who are you? I am in Christ. Behold, I'm a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. This is the public profession of faith. When Jesus said, he who denies me before the world, I'll deny before my father. Man, those are harsh words. But he who is not ashamed of me, in this cursed and wicked generation, I will not be ashamed in front of my father in heaven. This is the symbol of identification with Christ. This is our identification card. It is symbolic. Being baptized is not what saves an individual. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. When we put our faith in him, when we trust him with everything that we are and everything that we have, we come into a new relationship with him. Water baptism doesn't save, but water baptism is a visual expression of what's happened on the inside. The Bible says we've been born again. We are a new creation. We have been regenerated We have new hearts, new lives, and this becomes an expression of that. You may ask, well, why do I have to go under the water? Why immersion? Well, listen, man, it's all by grace, but I'm going to tell you this. We do immersion because that's what Jesus did. First of all, the word baptize itself means to immerse. It means to go under. Second, when Jesus was baptized, as an example for all, it says when he came up out of the water. So logic, man. To come up out of the water, you got to go under the water, all right? So it's the way Jesus did it. That's why, that's why we immerse. Now, we're not, we're not haters on other traditions or any other way that anybody wants to do it, whatever. It's about faith in the Lord. But the reason we have a pool here is because... That's the way Jesus did it. It's also done after you give your heart to Christ, after you put your faith in Jesus Christ. There's a lot of different religious traditions and a lot of different ways. I mean, when I, when I was a, a baby, I had a, my godfather was a, was a minister in a tradition uh, that they christened. And he was pretty insistent. I had to get that, all right? So I've had that. But I'm going to tell you, with all the gentleness I can, that's not believer's baptism. Because when I was a baby, I had made no decision to put my faith in Jesus Christ. Because baptism represents the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and I'm identifying with that, and I'm dying to my old life and raised to a new life in Christ, that loses all significance if not done after one puts their faith in Jesus Christ. So we call it post-conversion. It's after you give your heart to Christ. I've seen a lot of kids follow peer pressure and walk down and are baptized. And then I talk to them when they're teenagers and adults and they're like, I didn't know what I was doing. Well, we're not into re-baptism. You don't have to get baptized every time you learn something new in the faith. You don't have to get baptized every time you repent from a sin that you commit. When you're baptized, you're baptized. Just like Christ's death was once for all, your baptism is once for all. If you understand what you're doing. If you know what you're doing. If you just followed the crowd or did it, then you just got wet. But true baptism comes when we put our faith in Jesus and we follow him and we follow his example and his command. And it becomes that identification with Jesus Christ. And so today, as we are going to practice baptism, we're going to do that. Uh, We are going to be following the Lord's command to show that visible representation. And we're going to do that in the next service, and we'd love for you to stay if you want to. If you can't, we understand. But I will also tell you, if you put your faith in Jesus Christ and you haven't been baptized after you put your faith in Jesus Christ, we want to encourage you to do that. 
The Lord commands us to identify with him. He becomes everything to us, and that becomes our identification. We are going to baptize again on the last Sunday of August, August 27th. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can you can email info at he'salivechurch.org or talk with me or Mark. We'd love to have you participate in that. I want you to pray today, and I want us to pray together for those who have taken that step, that courageous step to identify uh, with the Lord through baptism today. It is truly an awesome gift and a joy as a church to see people visually represent changed lives. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much that in you we have died to sin and been raised to a new life. God, you have changed us from the inside out and you have given us a visual representation as John got the ball rolling with it, a baptism of repentance, and then you took it and made it a baptism of of, of grace, and we die, and we live. And I thank you for that. Lord, there are four individuals today who are going to come, and they're going to get in this pool. And it's not just about getting wet. It's about showing the world that they belong to you. It's about a desire that when people see them, they see you. It's about showing that they have died to an old life and are raised to a new life. And we celebrate that powerful expression of an inward salvation. Thank you, God, for that opportunity today. And may it be a special time for them and a time of celebration for this church. And God, we know that as we baptize, there's still a lot room for more, God. We are in a community that needs hope that needs the gospel, that needs you. And may we never shrink back from that call, from that mandate. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And as baptism becomes an expression, a symbolic expression of an inward faith, so too we want to do something else that Jesus did where he gave significance and symbolism to another thing that was normal in the lives of the Jews. And that was this feast of Passover, where they actually remembered all the way back to the time when they were wandering in the wilderness and had no place to stay, and they would set up these tents, and God would provide for them food. He would provide for them manna, and he would give them water. And so they celebrated this every year. As they finally went into Israel, they established a nation, and then they had a home. God said, you will remember your days in the wilderness with a feast of Passover that also went all the way back to him delivering them out of Egypt when that last plague came through, and the oldest son of each family was killed. They put the blood of an unblemished lamb over their door, and the angel of death passed over. It all pointed to Jesus. And so as Jesus was in the upper room that night before he was arrested, and they had their normal Passover meal, and Jesus gave it new significance, and he picked up the bread and he broke it. And he said, I mean, this is hours before he's going to get arrested and go to the cross the next day. He broke the bread and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take it, eat it, do this in remembrance of me. And he passed the bread around and they took it. And he took the cup with the wine and he took it up and he said, this is my blood, which has been shed for you, which will be shed for you. Take it, drink it. And do this in remembrance of me. And for 2,000 years, we as the body of believers continue with that in remembrance of what Jesus did for us. We take the bread, his body. We take the cup, his blood as a symbolic 
remembrance of what he did for us.